am I supposed to film when you're chewing on your bone? Thank you. Hey, Brass Facts here. Today we're going to be doing the Urban Recce loadout. This is a continuation of my Urban Reconnaissance mission video, linked up here. So I'm going to be talking about what uh, I would bring on that mission. To be sure, this is a loadout for a somewhat specific mission set, which involves night vision ingress, egress, observations from a static point, and taking contact is lower on the totem pole of likelihoods and objectives. This doesn't include bushwhacking, this doesn't include sleeping in the mountains, this doesn't include prepping a five-star meal with your whisper light -like jet. I have a different bag set up for something that would be closer to that, a two to three day excursion into the mountains or maybe even the edge of urban slash rural. But this is entirely a urban setup. This entire setup is balanced around uh, a lightweight setup for a quick in out a 30 hour higher intensity or maybe a three day lower intensity. And when I say higher intensity, I still mean, you know, making contact is not the goal or taking contact fighting, whatever is not the goal. Finally, because this is going to somewhat be similar to my mountain bag video, it's worth noting I somewhat mistitled that because the mission set between those are somewhat similar. I'll explain soon because I'm modifying my gear and changing that what my 48 to 72 hour mountainous setup or long range setup is and this what you see here ain't it one more thing you'll see a lot of gear here i'm not bringing all this gear i'm absolutely not bringing all this gear in fact i will probably only bring a third or less of this gear and you'll kind of see what's up with that in a second so just note this is more for picture sake right because it's a mission and different missions, even if they're the same objective, will require different gears depending on expected conditions, expected intensity level, uh, and expected travel distance, so on and so forth. So a lot of this will change depending on what I want to do when I get where I want to go and do what I want to do. Okay, let's kick some things out of here so we can kind of get to the core of the situation and have room on this camera to kind of um, explain the different pieces of gear. Let's get the plate carrier out of the way. The plate carrier is when the mission is shorter in duration, so sub 30 hours. The mission has a much higher risk factor, as in uh, the area is more densely inhabited. There is a higher expectation of contact to the point of where I'm willing to deal with this and deal with the loss of capacity by not using this. And um, I will probably use a rifle to uh, appropriately augment. Also, night vision. My entire playing game plan here is when able to travel during the night because the night is safer than the day because even though a lot of people have night vision, it's still less than the people that don't have night vision. And uh, well, I'll take every advantage I can get because traveling at night under night vision, even if your potential opposition has night vision, that doesn't necessarily actually immediately screw you over. You're still going to move as if you were during the day, usage of cover, shadowed areas, so on and so forth. So night vision is a critical part of the game plan. During the day, if I want to move, this entire setup can be lashed to the exterior of the bag or fit into the back of the plate carrier because of this bag system I have here. So hypothetically, let's say we're going to be using the plate carrier. Um, I will offload or take out the critical components of this this bag that I need, including food, which is not stored here, right? Because it needs to be stored elsewhere and put that in here. Because this is a go from point A to point B thing and I have a hydration bladder, uh, the bag only gets reached into when we are at location. Hence, the acceptability of a fixed bag system like this. Okay, let's get the plate carrier out of the way. Real quick, something to touch on. Drone usage, drone usage is incredibly useful. However, due to battery consumptions, limited loiter time, right? Things happen somewhat a lot slower in the book versus observing a, you know, static location for a, a police watch out. Um, 
and the fact that I question if the firmware on these things will even allow you to be using these when you have left, you know, internet range for months on end, right? It might just get upset at you and not let you fly. That has happened several times to me now. So the drone is an option, but it is not the only option. Next up, rifles. Remember the objective here is to get to a static location and observe. However, that might include fighting to the locations. Do we want to fly, fight to the location or at the location? No, the goal is to inhabit a uninhabited structure or observation point. And because we're traveling at night, the whole plan is to avoid conflict in the first place. And the whole reason why we're doing observation is to figure out where hot zones are, where aggressive individuals lie, that probably didn't prepare and now are getting food and all that stuff uh, aggressively, shall we say. So we still need a rifle because contact is always a possibility. Now, why do we have two different rifle setups? Are we bringing both? No. <laughs> This is simply based off of what we expect. If we expect a higher likelihood of night fighting or you know, even daytime fighting or just fighting in general, a setup like this to me is more preferable. We have a one to four X with a uh, you know, illumination. We got a laser aiming device, we're suppressed and we have a much more usable package for a fight. This is my general rifle that I use to solve most of my problems or train with and really solve any problems other than what to buy at the grocery, and what to feed the dog. But <laughs> the, uh, this is what I'll go to if there are no pressing requirements, right? This is my, as Milspec Mojo says, my squeeze, my main squeeze. So this is what I'll generally go for. This is what you would consider potentially an SPR. You'll notice some things about this SPR and a lot of times conversation goes as follows. Why don't you use a 308 if you want a sniper system? Well, it's because of this and other mission sets like it. The SPR, and specifically this SPR, special purpose rifle, special purpose receiver, whatever you want to call it, I discuss what an SPR means to me and only me. You can choose to take it or leave it. But to me, a special purpose rifle, SPR, whatever you want to call it, needs the ability to, at the end of the day to do sniper stuff. That means engage with consistency out to range. I have videos discussing what makes a SPR different to a general purpose rifle. However, a key requirement of an SPR is that it's still lightweight, handy, and not over encumbered enough. And we have proper magnification settings such that I can still use it as a fighting rifle. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if I am or I'm not getting into a fight to my location, right? It's the end of the world. There are no rules, no nothing. I mean, there might be some rules, but there's no guarantees. So at the end of the day, this still needs to function as a fighting rifle, uh, but it might have more capability. Hence, I have it set up as follows. It's still relatively lightweight, just, uh, just slightly over 10 pounds. We have added benefits like a bipod, which is far more stable than engaging off of a backpack once set up. It's got magnification, which is useful for both engaging and observation and spotting for a other shooter that may have more capabilities. RMR up top, it's useful to just side in your scope, right? Where am I pointing? Look through the RMR, look through the scope, or as a closer range option. It also allows me to engage under night vision because as you notice, this setup has no laser aiming device. Okay, that about covers it. With this rifle, I'll have a specific video on the rifle itself. I can, if I want, suppress this, and I know the offsets so I can dial that in. This guy. We're gonna have a podcast with some smarter than I, and we're gonna talk about why or why not you need, you know, three mags, six mags, eight mags, whatever. My philosophy, as I've said several times, and I've posted a video, Put that up at the corner is well i think a two or three magazine loadout is acceptable and if you are worried about potentially more contact you can load your bag up with extra magazines to replenish on the way but this is what i'm generally satisfied with this is low weight low bulk and it allows me to get to where i need to go in the fastest time possible if weight is a concern and i don't want to wear to wear a plate carrier you'll notice the plate carrier was pretty slim lined as well that was about a 15 pound plate carrier. 
right? Because if you can get to where you're going and back faster, you're spending more or less time in the hot zone, thus your survivability goes up inherently without even having to fight the fight. Okay, so in here we have parts of a first aid kit, dope cards, uh, pencils, uh, some extra paper, though I have more paper in here, uh, range finder, and some other stuff. Very slim line, two mags, radio. I can move the radio to a radio pouch that I can attach, put a P PTT on, but for now I'm just leaving it as so. The, the antenna is right here. This does need a Leatherman, but I, uh, I lost it and I've been too lazy to replace it. Okay, let's get into the heart of it. The, uh, or actually, we'll, we'll touch over the night vision real quick. This is a simple setup with a panel bridge up top. It is a articulating dual setup, and it has a number of convenient features. Um, I have a video on the introduction of said device. And uh, if you want, you can go check that out. But it's a decent binocular setup that kind of does it for a little bit cheaper and gives you some noticeable added capabilities that dual tubes do not offer you. There are some downsides, however, and eventually I'll have a review up on it. But good setup. Bump helmet is what it is. When I want to like not be using this, but still be moving, take off the night vision. This goes into a bag that houses in here, and this can attach to the back of the backpack very securely. I've hiked a lot with it, and it's not going anywhere. Getting into this bag. This bag has been touched on uh, once before, but I'm going to get into a little more detail as to how it pertains to this mission. You'll notice almost nothing on the exterior except the gloves. That's because the gloves will generally go on. Looking so at the exterior, you'll notice there are no snag hazards, as much as can be expected on a nylon backpack, right? We have these things, right? But because we are in a city, going through windows, going uh, over objects, vaulting things, going through just narrow hallways, you want as little shit impeding on the outside, like, I don't know, a tarp or a giant water bottle impeding on the outside as possible. If you've done CQB with a backpack, you know what I'm saying. You go through a doorway and your fucking backpack, you know, catches on the, uh, the doorknob and you just get stuck in the doorway, lit the fuck up, and your teammate plows into the back of you at full speed, right? It's not fun stuff. Vaulting over windows, you don't want to get caught on things or vaulting over like small barricades, you don't want to get caught, right? Because that's just disastrous. You have, to un you have to exit the backpack. And generally when you're vaulting things, you're trying to be fast. So there's usually a reason why you're being fast. At that time specifically, you don't want to get caught on things. Let's go in the bag. The Mystery Ranch is very unique because you have the option of opening it like a conventional bag up top and reaching in, or you can leave that closed and you can kind of fillet it open and access materials on the inside. Important thing to note about the interior of the bag. It's mostly empty. It's about 50% empty. Hi, dog. You, you want to join in? Lie down. Lie down. Hi. Can I help you? Stay. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the other side of the... Actually, I think she wants to just hang out. Okay. So she's helping with the reveal. Um, just, yeah, just tolerate her. So important thing to note is it's mostly empty. Why? Because I need food. And food is, well, takes up space. I don't have any food preloaded because this isn't a quick run and go bag. It's not like I need to do a recce mission right now. Go! That's not, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, that's not what this is about. I will configure this bag. Uh, this is dog facts now, but uh, I will configure this bag for an objective and a mission. And I have time to plan the mission. This isn't a go, 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 go right now thing. So this is just the baseline complement of the bag. And I will remove, right? If I want to go to that plate carrier, or I will add food, more water, maybe shelter if I expect to be on top of a building, right? Like a deployable uh, tarp. So this bag can take more stuff. It's just configured in its baseline configuration. Speaking of baseline configuration, let's get into it. We have water, because here, these are just two Nalgene's I have, right? I have more of these and I have more of these. So if I want less or more water, I have that option available to me. 
I can also move the water to the exterior, though it's not great because once again, snag hazard. And in this bag specifically, um, these pouches kind of suck the hold water. Oh, that was a slight cut. The dog's gone. He's over there, don't worry. Next up, toilet paper. Well, I know a lot of people like wet wipes. I like toilet paper. Who gives a shit? But you're gonna take a shit. So, toilet paper. Trash bags. People have condemned me for having trash bags. Maybe they're right to a degree. But I've done a lot of camping. I've taught survival courses. I've done a lot of stuff. And the amount of times that I solved a problem with a trash bag, either waterproofing something impromptu, uh, using it for minor insulation in like a sleeping bag that's been soaked through, um, or, you know, snow is melted and it's that slushy state and all shoes go to shit, even the pretty waterproof ones, right? Only really like rubber shoes can survive that. And you need to impromptly make your feet waterproof. You can put this over your shoe or over your, your sock, put your shoe on and then tape this to your, your body and it creates some degree of waterproofness. I've done a lot of things and I've been bailed out by trash bags I had lying around because, you know, you don't want to leave trash out when you're camping or whatever. So I've been saved by these a lot. I'm maybe just unwilling to give these up. I understand it's been mentioned. These are not very camouflaged. Yes, I get it, but this is an emergency item. Furthermore, with uh, you know old fashionedness, this bag doesn't really need a blade. I carry a blade on me. I will be carrying a blade on me um, in the boog. I will likely have a pocket knife on me or even a multi-tool. But there is nothing that replaces a fixed blade in terms of utility, uh, food processing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I feel comfortable. I, don't, I feel, I'd feel uncomfortable leaving the house without a fixed blade. This isn't for stabbing people. This is for utility, right? So. Yeah, doesn't need to be here really, because I don't foresee myself using it, and I rarely do, but it's nice to have. Uh, something to mention I forgot. There's a battery in here that can charge cell phones. Now, why the fuck would I want to charge a cell phone when probably all cell phone towers have been... Hi, the dog is here. Uh, of all cell phones, our towers are down, so on and so forth. Well, they make great observational camera devices. I have a DSLR. But how exactly am I going to recall those photos in near full resolution? Well, unless you can power a laptop during these scenarios, you can't. So a cell phone actually works as a very good stand-in because you can power it via battery banks, which are easy to keep juiced up. Hello, can I help you? I'm talking. Urban Recce, yes. Can you Lie down. That's the spot against the camera stand? Okay. Um, but you can take a cell phone, and I have a bunch of cell phones, right? You know, your cell phone breaks partially, right? Doesn't work. Excuse me. <laughs> stay, stay, down, down. But you can use devices like this to mount a uh, cell phone to a scope or a PVS-14 or whatever. Or I even have another one that bolts to Picatinny and does the same thing. It really depends on your rifle setup and what type of scope. But you can take images through your scope, which might be very useful for, you know, debriefs and stuff like that. Dry bag, food might go in here, right? specific types of food that if I'm worried if it breaks, it'll get everywhere. Or in verse, I can just store gear on here and attach it to the outside, right? If I find something out there, I can put clothes in here if it's very wet. Very useful utility. If I don't want it, I don't bring it. And finally, these food bags, people keep thinking this is what I'm eating when I'm going out. I'm not eating these when I go out. But for the people that actually do hikes, long-term stuff, how many times have you planned for three days, you brought four days worth of food and uh, you go through all of it and you know, you still need more food because you're beginning to burn calories hard. That's what this is for. If I need to ditch and make room for more space, I will ditch this and make room for more space. Specifically, for example, if I wanted to put a hydration pack in here and upgrade my water supply, that's what this hook is for. It goes in here, you route through here, and there's a little attachment on these, these arm these straps that allow for a hydration bladder. Over here is where I like to keep my ammo. Uh, if I were to bring ammo, I might take these out if I decide I don't need to. I have a large enough team to handle most problems. If I want more ammo, it fits nicely in here. I can fit, fit about four mags without them rattling. Uh, for now, I just have two mags in here, number 26 and 27. And that is really about it for the core bag setup. Up here is simply a face mask, right? Just for warmth, whatever. Maybe even washing. 
And over here is first aid. This is like an expandable first aid. Most of my kit already has first aid built into it. But if I want, this is a dangler, I can attach this for augmented first aid. I can also just leave it in here as, you know, refill for the lack of a better term, um, whatever you want to call it. Over here, I have fire starting equipment because like the knife, I just have that insatiable desire to always have fire starting equipment on me for emergency situations. If someone gets insanely soaked, you can start a fire. And yeah, there's one piece of equipment. Oh, and then there's like painkillers and uh, painkillers and water purification. Yeah, I have painkillers in here actually. Or actually they're in here. There's one thing that's not here that I just took out. I had a little condor pouch that had paper, pencils, so on and so forth. And um, I took that out because I'm replacing it right now. I just ordered it on Amazon, waterproof paper, because yeah, that was an issue. The paper was getting sogged through during regular training and I wasn't even taking it out. So I switched to waterproof paper, got rid of that. Uh, but that is, you know, it's not in here right now. And that's a key component of this bag, uh, the ability to write stuff down write down areas, so on and so forth. On that note, where the fuck did I put it? I have about, I have about three of these. What are these? These are in, uh, informational packets that I've created for my area. Um, I don't want to get too much of it visible because this is getting into heavy OPSEC land. Um, but this has SOPs radio freaks that we use. They're actually all programmed in all of my radios, but it has all that information and it also has um, just, is this one? Yeah, so this is just a vague area. Everyone knows I live in Salt Lake. This is a oversized map of Salt Lake and this shows Salt Lake as a map. Do I need a map for Salt Lake to navigate? No. What this is for, and specifically not this one, but the smaller ones, is the ability to be in an area and I'm talking about the really small ones that are about, you know, four by four blocks or something. The ability to have a template to write Intel down. For example, this building is occupied, this building has douchebags, this building has a cute dog. I can write that information down in a quicker fashion than having to draw up city blocks inaccurately on paper uh, from an observational point. Here, I can just go straight onto the paper and write it down. I have a bajillion of these. I got a printer and printed off like 10, 20 copies of each tile, uh, so on and so forth. So as the quote unquote mission will dictate, I will pull from that file folder or one of the other folders and uh, populate the bag with these things and I would write straight to the pieces of paper. And that really about covers it. We did it. Oh, and then I have, you know, rain gear, right? Easy enough. So that's about it. Thanks for watching. Understand these types of videos are more for conversational starting points. Um, I've been wrong many times and I'm likely partially wrong here. I've never really, you know, gotten stuck in a complete collapse of society. So some of this gear isn't vetted. It's my experience, it's my survival experience, so on and so forth, kind of applied to what I think some scenario like this might play out with. So uh, I've, I've talked to a lot of people that have been there, done that in the military setting, some people that are just good campers, outdoorsmen. I vetted some of this, they agree, they disagree with some things, and I came up with the this setup. It's always evolving, I'm changing it as I'm learning more, or I'm changing it as my capabilities allow me to jettison pieces of gear that I might not need anymore. Uh, so you should view this as like a, like a conversational piece, and to get your thoughts going, to question your gear, Right? You could see this and question your gear and you're like, no, I think I'm right. He's wrong. Or you see this and you're like, that's a very good point. So that's how you should view this. Don't use this as a template for how your setup is going to be. Um, yeah. If you enjoyed this, consider heading over to Patreon. I run this channel on a deficit. So every little bit helps to keep this channel functioning well into the future. If you'd like to see it continue well into the future. That being said, like, Comments, like, subscribe, all that bullshit, you know, your YouTubers say at the end of videos. That is also very much appreciated. So thanks so much. I love reading the comments. It's fun. It's a good time. Uh, even the schizophrenic posts are, are good bits of fun. We, we love reading over those and laughing about them. So I appreciate it. Thanks for watching my incoherent bag video. And uh, hey, Nova, you want to say bye? Come here.
Come here. Oh, she was curling up to sleep. Hi, do you want to go say bye? Yeah, lie down. Okay, this is where you're going to sleep now? Alright, we can't move anymore. The dog has claimed a spot. 